All right, um, this is going to be a really brief explanation of the Blitz Basic Mega Drive project um, for cross platform Amiga and Mega Drive development in Blitz Basic. Um, what we've got in the repository is a game that we can compile for Amiga, so we're running the Amiga version here. Uh, and then over here we've got the Mega Drive version running in the Genes emulator. So um, <clears throat> just going to go back over to WinUE. Uh, so basically, the, there's three components in the uh, in the kit. Um, we've got our resource compiler, um, or we can make the Mega version, we can make the Mega Drive version. Um, I'll just quickly go into our resources folder just to explain what we've got. So uh, what we have is we've got our tile map in IFF format. So that's just their standard Amiga graphics format. Um, that also includes their sprites as well as a palette. Um, and that's uh, just adapted from Teeny Zini's uh, graphics set by MC Fleischer. Uh, just wait for that to open so we see what that looks like. So it's real basic, um, we haven't got the whole tile set, we've just got a few of the tiles and sprites. Uh, this is set up as a 16 color image, um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. It's basically uh, 16 colors is like a lowest common denominator of what the Mega Drive can do and what the Amiga can do. Uh, the, both the Mega Drive and the Amiga have their own unique strengths and weaknesses. But with this project, because it's, it has to be simple and has to be cross-platform, uh, I'm just going for 16 colors with um, 16 pixel wide tiles and 16 pixel wide sprites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the um, resource importer file and just go over what it does. So it loads our tile map, um, it converts it to the um, the Mega Drive palette format, which is uh, 12, uh, sorry, it's 9-bit color, which is similar to the Atari ST, but it... Um, <clears throat> It does have a weird VDP ramp, which is basically the the colors on either like the darks are darker and the the bright colors are brighter than you might expect um, for a, a linear color ramp. You may want to take that into account if you're making your own uh, cross-platform project. Um, you can actually see if I go. If I just run the Amiga game, you can see that there is quite a noticeable difference in the uh, palette. So that, I mean that's partly because the uh, the Amiga the Amiga has higher color fidelity with a four hundred nine six palette versus the Mega Drive's five twelve uh, color base palette. Um, but that's also because of that. Um, uh, VDP ramp. So if you want to get your colors accurate, you may need to do some research on what that is and how to um, how to adjust the colors. Um, so the palette's the first thing it does. The second thing it does is it goes through every tile and it converts them into the uh, format for Mega Drive, so with the Mega uh, graphics are always in a bit plane format. With Mega Drive, it's a bit different. It's a little bit closer to 
the chunky graphics format you might expect on PC, except it's two pixels in every byte. So that's um, that's why you've got the 16 color limitation per uh, sprite or tile on the Mega Drive. And the final thing it does is it loads the uh, CSV from the map. So um, what we've got here is just that. So that's just the uh, the visuals of the map. Um, and we can actually we can actually look at the source for that. I've included the tiled map, so you can make some changes here if you ever want to. But you will need to go. Uh, export and then save it as CSV. So yeah, this final bit loads that CSV file and then it converts it to um, basically it just saves out the array for Amiga, but for the Mega Drive it converts it to the format that it expects it to be in. So name table is just um yeah it, it's basically just the tile map so that covers the resource compiler so that in that resource compiler program uh, we can just go execute make resources and then just run that and then that generates the data files in both mega format and mega drive formats uh, in regards to the actual game, we have this game.bb file, um, and so this is all meant to be abstract. So there's nothing in here that's specifically a command for Mega or Mega Drive. Um, we have this function here that um, it replaces Q limit. So Q limit is a built-in uh, Blitz basic command. The problem with using Q limit is that if you use that, then it's going to try to import Amiga libraries and it's just not going to work on Mega Drive. So um, that's the sort of things you need to be careful about um, for sort of development. And so what it basically does is we've got a macro that runs setup, a macro that fades the palette to nothing, and then we build sprite. Uh, we have a fade in um, routine. And then after that, the game loop, it just reads a joystick and then it adjusts the player's position, direction and animation frame, uh, as well as clamping the camera to within their screen. Uh, just one thing I'll quickly note is that uh, even though the game is scrolling, the setup doesn't... Um, like neither the Amiga nor the Mega Drive versions of the game are efficiently scrolling. They're not doing any tricks where they copy tiles from one side of the map to the other so that you can have it, uh, so that you can walk um, indefinitely in any particular direction. It is just clamped to being a 512 by 512 sized um, a bitmap on Amiga and then a 512 by 512 tile map on Mega Drive. So for the Amiga version, uh, so all of those, just keep that open. So all of these um, macros and functions are defined here, like Rejoy, I've had to make Amiga specific versions of them. Um, so there's nothing here that's uh, terribly advanced. Um, basically just loads the tiles and it creates a bitmap and then it blitz each of those tiles onto the bitmap. And then all we need to do to run that is go to make Amiga. Um, so the make Amiga file what it does is it joins um, a few files together so it joins our Amiga header with our game file to create a Amiga specific um, uh, source code file 
and we can just run that nice and simple. Uh, the Mega Drive version is a bit more complicated. Um, and so I'll open the make file for the Mega Drive. And so that, that does something similar where it joins the Mega Drive header to the game file to make a Mega Drive specific Blitz Basic source file. Um, <clears throat> and then it opens it in Blitz Basic. But once we've put Blitz Basic, it runs this utility of included for Blitz to Sega, which will take a exported Blitz Basic Amiga executable and rip out the hunks to create a ROM file. Uh, but that's that's very fiddly; it can break very very easily. So um, just need to. Um, uh, just need to take care with it to make sure that you haven't done anything like you haven't accidentally loaded any Amiga libraries that get included with certain Blitz basic functions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to execute make Amiga drive. Um, we can't actually compile this. Sorry, we can't run this. If I do compile and run now, it's obviously going to crash because uh, I'm running it in Amiga mode, but I can compile it. So I'm just going to go create executable and I'm just going to save it as Mega Drive. So when I quit, this Blitz 2 Sega says it's successfully created a Mega Drive file. And then to run it, let's find. So we've got our newly created Mega Drive ROM right there. And we can just drag that into an emulator, test it. So with Mega Drive 1, we've also got a header. And the Mega Drive header is a lot more complicated than the, um, the Amiga one. I'm just going to very briefly go over everything here. Um, I have got... X res and Y res hard coded because the Y resolution of the Mega Drive is a bit less than what you'd expect from um, an Amiga game. Um, <clears throat> beyond that, this is the uh, this defines the ROM header. So every Mega Drive game starts with fi a five twelve K sorry five hundred twelve byte header that does things like it. Um, sets of pointers to the um, exceptions, exception handling, um, also lets you, you know, put in metadata, um, you know, what the name of the game is, um, so on. Um, then this bit here, so this is called from our Mega Drive library uh, that it basically sets up a fake version of Amiga's um, uh, EXEC library in the Kickstart ROM. So basically all that does is it does a fake version of um, uh, alloc mem because uh, so every Blitz Basic program, the very first thing it does is it allocates a space of memory to put all of the variables in. Uh, the Mega Drive version needs to do that as well. So, what the Acid Software guys did when they ported Skid Marks to Mega Drive is they came up with this idea of uh, basically creating that fake Mega Kickstart ROM and then putting it in the Mega Drive cartridge so that the uh, the Skid Marks game for Mega Drive that was still code in Blitz Basic, but it thinks it's running on Amiga, so it um, assigns uh, memory uh, that way and so yeah this this is basically copied the function is basically copied from the uh, skid marks um, uh, game um, and here we've basically just got some general setup um, set up for the um, uh, the horizontal and vertical blank interrupts. We're not actually doing anything there. Uh, if you wanted to do something like a like a copper sky, um, that's where you would do it. Where you could 
you know, change the background color uh, scan line. Um, we've included our files here, and then these are all the same uh, functions and macros that we had in our um, had in our Mega header, except we have adapted them to be specific to Mega Drive. Um, and yeah, so for example, we've got this render sprite, so that just renders a single Mega Drive sprite to the screen. Um, with the Amiga version, I think we're using um, uh, we're using Display Sprite. Uh, so, so yeah, so Display Sprite uh, in Blitz Basic that will do that will just render an Amiga hardware sprite. Here we're saying to render a Mega Drive hardware sprite. So we've got our Mega Drive sprite format. We're just filling in that details, and then we're copying it into our VDB um, RAM. So that's almost it. The, the last thing I just wanted to cover was the um, the Blitz the library um, for Blitz Basic. So it's just called Mega Drive Lib an OBG. It's pretty far from being complete. It doesn't include all of the um, for instance, the VDP functions, all of the functions to be able to control the graphics output, but it also doesn't include any functions for the sound output. So we'll need to integrate one driver or another to add um, sound effects and music. Um, the Mega Drive lib.s file, so that's just a source code for the. Um, that's basically the Blitz library definition, and so if we look through that, we can see all of the uh, commands that have actually been implemented. Um, so, uh, for example, if we wanted to test if we're holding down the reset button, we can use that function there. Uh, or if we want to get the state of Player 2's 3-button pad, we can do that. Uh, and then Mega Drive lib functions. This is a pure assembly language file. Um, you could, uh, you know, you don't necessarily need to use it with um, uh, this library. You could use it. Uh, you could use it with a um, an assembly language Mega Drive game or a C Mega Drive game. Uh, and since this is all. Um, open source, I'm hoping to get some help with um, you know, adding some functions and uh, you know, making it uh, more bug free, more efficient. Um, and yeah, I think that's about everything. Um, do feel free to leave uh, comments on the video if uh, you have any questions.